Welcome to Literacy TA's eCoach webinar on 21st Century Skills. Today we're going to be using a Prezi application to talk about 21st Century. I don't think there's anything more appropriate than using a modern presentation tool to talk about the skills of 21st Century. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The way this presentation is laid out is we're going to go over three critical skills, reading, speaking, and writing. These skills are important for 21st century. We're going to talk about how we can implement these skills in the classroom and how we can use technology to teach these skills and to enhance instruction. After we talk about reading, speaking, and writing, we're going to go ahead and move over to character, which I think is imperative for 21st century. And we'll talk about exactly what character traits students need to develop in order to be successful in a competitive world. Let's go ahead and take a look at 21st century skills. As you notice, the Prezi zooms in and out, so it provides focus to certain content that I want you to see. This is part of 21st century, teaching students how to use presentation tools to communicate complex ideas. Prezi allows me to focus on ideas at one time so that I don't have to worry about all the other information in my presentation. So I'm gonna use Prezi during this presentation to model a 21st century tool. For us, 21st century skills is important because we want to equip our students with the knowledge and skills they need to be successful in a competitive and evolving world. We know that the world is changing rapidly and we have to keep up with it. Our students are very good with technology, but they're more um, equipped with the social end of technology. They don't have all of the academic skills in regard to technology. So one thing that we want to make sure that we do is honor the way in which students use technology, but also show students how to use technology in academic ways. For example, students might use Twitter, they might use Facebook, um, but if they only understand modern, modern technology to, um, to socialize, they have really missed some opportunities and they don't quite understand the potential that these modern applications um, offer. So what we want to do is is teach them tools like Prezi. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can use such a tool while you're learning about 21st century skills. Let's go ahead over to reading. There are three skills that we have underlined for reading. In order to prepare students for the 21st century, we need to teach them how to be strategic readers. That means they need to be able to sit down to a reading and decide on certain strategies that they're going to use in order to attack the text. This has to be taught and they have to learn how to do this independently. This isn't something that um, they are instructed to do. That, of course, is how it starts. But once our students are with us for a period of time and we have a chance to teach them skills, we want them to be able to use them strategically on their own so that they can read a, a, ver a variety of texts and read them independently. That's the goal. Analyze a wide range of texts. Students need to read literature, they need to read nonfiction, they need to be reading texts online, they need to read all sorts of documents, um, they need to learn how to read technical documents, and they need to know how to break them down. So 21st century skill for, uh, for our students is to analyze texts, a wide range of them. Also looking at speeches, um, being able to decipher what is and what is not factual or truth about what someone says. Television is constantly sending us messages and our students need to be aware of these messages and be able to break them down. Which leads us to our last bullet for reading, evaluating credibility. Our students are inundated with information online as well as the television. And because they're exposed to so much information, they need tools and strategies they can use to equip themselves to really um, make good decisions about the information that's coming in and decide on what is and what is not important. This is really critical for our day and age when information is everywhere and information can be accessed at any moment. Let's go ahead and take a look at how Literacy TA can help deliver 21st century skills. First of all, we offer instructional strategies and tools that help teachers deliver these skills. We offer interactive web pages as well as the individual strategies themselves that teachers can use to teach students how to be more evaluative, teach students how to be more critical in their reading, teach students how to be more strategic in how they attack texts. 
We also offer a cognitive approach. So with every strategy, we tell students what a strategy is, how to use it, but most importantly, when and why to use it. Why those four questions are important is because we want students to use these independently long after they've left our classroom, long after they've left middle school, long after they've left high school. We want them to be able to use a strategy. And if they don't understand the strategy and they don't know why they would use it, they're really not going to apply it in any other context other than our classroom. So Literacy TA offers ways to teach this these strategies in a cognitive way so that they remember them and retain them. And the last one is explicit instruction. We have all sorts of scaffolding tools and uh, images. Um, we have demonstrations. And then we have advice to teachers about how to be explicit in teaching these strategies. And that's really, really important is teaching strategies that students understand. It says here that we want to model what good readers do. And one way we can do that is to show them models online, but then also give you ways as a teacher to model strategies in the moment. We're going to go ahead and zoom in even closer and take a look at the Literacy Skills homepage. And on this homepage, you will see five reading strategies that are outlined here. The going from the left to right, we have pre-reading, marking a text, charting a text, writing in the margins, and organizing information. These are five core reading strategies that we want to teach all students across campus in order to better prepare them for 21st century. The pre-reading is about making predictions and judgments about what information is coming and predicting what might uh, the message of a text be and marking is about breaking text down, getting to the central argument and looking at evidence and evaluating that evidence and charting is looking at text structure. How, how do authors construct texts and what decisions have they made? Um, why, why is the, this author using text features here? Uh, what is this image representing and how is it tied to the surrounding text? And writing in the margins helps students respond and connect to text, which we know all good readers do. So giving them the tools to read actively and think about the ideas in the text and respond to those ideas and sometimes summarize and clarify the ideas that may be a bit difficult to understand. And lastly, organizing information. Teaching students how to categorize ideas and put them into um, maybe columns or put them into different conceptual maps that they can use to better comprehend the text. All five of these strategies are available in Literacy TA and they're designed to help students succeed in 21st century. This is our reading section. Let's go ahead and move out into our speaking section. There are three skills outlined in our speaking section as well. Speak appropriately to various academic and professional audiences. What we're talking about here is teaching students how to speak to a teacher, speak to a professor at college, speak to their employer, and also speak online. We have now Google+, Plus. we have Skype, uh, we have FaceTime. There's a number of interactions that students are going to be engaged in as they mature, and they're going to need to know how to speak appropriately in a number of these different type of environments. We want to expose them to these environments in school so that they can learn how to speak appropriately and learn how to talk to a camera, learn how to talk to someone who really isn't there, but virtually is. And I think that that's a really interesting experience and a unique skill that students need to develop. The second bullet reads, present complex ideas through modern presentation tools and applications. I'm doing that right now. I'm using Prezi, which is a modern application, to present a complex idea, 21st century skills. Students need to learn how to use these types of tools like Google Presentation, Prezi, Glogster. Uh, there's a number of products out there and tools that are for the most part free that students can use to present their ideas. Um, I really like to have students use Google products. Um, I like my students to use Google presentation. I like them to embed their presentation in their Google sites. Um, I think that uh, Google Plus is a really powerful tool for 21st century skills. And so teaching our students about these different presentation tools and teaching them how to uh, present ideas through these tools and actually using the technology to help with message 
is really important. And we want to make sure that our students are learning that in the classroom. And lastly, collaborate effectively online and in person. Uh, students collaborate in a number of ways. They could go on discussion boards. They can collaborate in uh, chat rooms through Moodle. Uh, students could collaborate online using uh, Google Docs. They could be face-to-face uh, -face using Google+. And then they also need to learn how to uh, collaborate via email, even though it's not, uh, it's not in the moment. You're, they're not speaking to each other in real time. Uh, there is a number of, of collaborative projects that we do as professionals and students do as academics. Uh, that has to happen over email and they have to learn how to respond appropriately and and learn how to ask for materials and learn how to check in on how a project is coming along and this is all about collaboration communication and being able to stay connected so let's go a little bit further to see how literacy ta can help with all of these 21st century skills we have engaging activities that help students develop their speaking skills we have things like uh, read one, speak two, write three, which allows students to um, have an experience where they read a little bit and they speak for a few minutes maybe, and then write a couple of ideas down from the reading and speaking experience. We also have Socratic seminars. Uh, we have uh, debate aside where students will take a side on an issue and formulate clear arguments that can be supported with solid evidence and they discuss their ideas. Um, these are all activities that build confidence in students and teach them what is appropriate and what is not appropriate in public forums. How to, for example, wait to speak instead of just speaking when you think of an idea. Teaching students how to be patient when they hear something that uh, they want to respond to immediately or, or learning to understand other people's viewpoints without attacking them. We also offer strategies that enhance instruction and improve learning. We have a number of, of strategies and tips to help teachers implement technology in the classroom. We have online portfolios, for example, and uh, strategies to help teachers implement online portfolios where students can present their work over the year. We have ways that teachers can um, engage students in discussion boards. Uh, and then for us personally, we have uh, ways for teachers to learn through technology like this webinar and we also have a blog that teachers can read we um, also have instructional videos so all of these great things all of these deliverables um, are for you and your students to learn what 21st century is all about and and how to be engaged in in the learning of 21st century skills we're going to go ahead and go one step further and look at the literacy skills page. Now you see that there are, uh, it looks the same, it's the same page, but there are now five different strategies and these are our speaking strategies. We have pair share, small group, peer review, investigative reading, and Socratic seminar. A couple of these I've already talked about, talking about pair sharing, but let's talk a couple, uh, let's talk about a couple more. Uh, small group, we want to get our kids talking in pairs, but we also want them getting talking in fours and sixes. And so we have a number of ways that we can engage kids in small group. And we have all these wonderful diagrams that map a classroom and say, this is the way you can set up your chairs for this type of environment. Or consider setting up your physical environment this way in order to achieve this outcome. We have peer review, which is one of my favorites. Peer review is about taking kids to the next level with their writing teaching kids how to write and then revise their writing without the help of the teacher, which may be very surprising to many of you out there to think that kids can actually revise their work without the help of a teacher. And using our peer review strategy, you will see that students will develop into, I call them young editors or young writers, students who actually have something to say about the writing process and can revise their work. Does it have to be scaffolded in the beginning? Yes. Do we have to take our time to show them what we expect of them? Absolutely. But peer review is one of those great strategies that is connected to writing, but teaches kids how to critique effectively, how to talk about strategies, how to talk about um, writing strategies, how to talk about uh, how to improve someone's work, and then be able to reflect on their own work. So it's very, very powerful, both speaking and reading strategy. And then IR 
which is similar to the read one, speak to, write three strategy I talked about. IR is fantastic because it's going to teach students how to read together and investigate a text together by asking critical questions that help them understand what is actually being said and done in a text. And then as I've talked about already, Socratic seminar, which is about, of course, academic discourse, teaching students how to engage in academic discussions, while learning how to speak appropriately, while learning how to speak intelligently, and while learning how to speak maturely, which is very exciting. We're going to go ahead and zoom into writing. We have three bullet points again. The th three bullet points are these. We need to teach our students how to write appropriately to various academic and professional audiences. Students need to learn how to write to friends, but they also need to learn to write a letter to a professor. They need to learn how to write a, a letter for an application. Right now, it is so competitive to get a job. Our, our students really need to learn the importance of, of discourse and appropriate communication uh, in the professional world. Cover letters, um, essays now, applica applications require candidates to write essays. Our students have to write essays that speak about themselves in a positive way, but also demonstrate to the employer that they have intelligence, that they have passion, that they have reason. All of these things are uh, critical to communicate to a future employer, a potential employer, and our students need to learn how to communicate effectively to a wide range of audiences. Our students also need to learn how to synthesize ideas. That's where everything, that's where pretty much all of our work happens is through synthesis. You have businesses that are built from other businesses. You have research that is built from the work of others. Uh, you, new ideas always are spurred by someone else's thinking. And we want to teach our kids how to synthesize in order to build arguments with other people's ideas, learn how to support arguments, Learn how to create new ideas by bringing two different uh, maybe perspectives together to show maybe a third perspective. But all of these skills need to be taught and our students need to learn how to synthesize ideas. Technology is another example of synthesis where we used to think there were websites and then there was PowerPoint. And now we have PowerPoint embedded in websites. And that is a form of synthesis that we're taking two different technologies and we're putting them together in order to form a better technology, in order to form a way to communicate um, that uh, is better than the first original idea. And I think that that's really critical for 21st century skills. Students are going to need it for school and they're also going to need it in the professional world when they become, uh, when they start their careers. And the last bullet is produce writing that is technical and analytical. Writing summaries is the first step. Being able to identify what main ideas are is the first step. But teachers, teachers need help and support when teaching students how to read analytically. Students must take a text apart and understand not only what a text says, but also what a text does. And then they need to write technically. They need to be able to write concisely and they need to be able to write in expository form. Um, they're not going to be asked to write stories when they go into their careers. Students are not going to be asked to write stories really in high school. What they're going to be asked to write in their science classes, in their history classes, and in their English classes is technical um, writing that is highly analytical. Their writing needs to be um, not as wordy as we would like it. I think as teachers we see a lot of wordiness, especially when students are trying to reach uh, a word count in an essay. And they need to, so they need to get to the point and they need to use concrete language, concrete nouns. They need to use strong verbs. All of this comes from practice in writing analytically and writing technically. And that's what we need to teach our students to be able to do. Let's take a look at what Literacy TA can do to help us get there. One of the things that we offer is scaffolding tools. Scaffolding tools to help students get to their ideas sooner. Scaffolding tools to help give credit to other people's ideas. So when I'm synthesizing, it doesn't sound like all of these ideas are mine, but that they belong to someone and that that someone has a, a profession and a career um, and has credibility that I need to make sure I acknowledge in my writing. Students also need to learn how to write concisely and our, our writing templates and sentence starters help students write concisely, help them get to uh, what they really need to get to, and also our templates help students analyze. 
our, our templates and our um, linguistic supports help uh, guide students in a direction so that they understand how to think about a text and, and how to uh, break a text down and then explain that to an audience. So I think that that's really important for that support. We also offer writing processes that are critical to student success from start to finish, from analyzing a prompt all the way to the last edit. We have a number of practical strategies our students can use as they learn how to become better writers. They can use these processes. And these processes are, are, are not wholly original, but what we've done is made sure that they are clear uh, so that students can use them. We made sure that they're explicit so they understand why you would go through each step. And we're just making the process, instead of reinventing something just to call it a writing process, we've taken the process that we know works and we've made it uh, accessible to students and we've given teachers the resources they need to make sure that they can be successful in its implementation. Because as we know, not everyone is as confident as others when teaching writing. Writing is one of those very personal experiences that teachers have with their students and we want to make sure that our teachers feel very confident. Let's see what we actually offer for our teachers. The first on the literacy skills page is the writing process. We, As I just explained, the writing process is very clear and it tells students how to write when writing about a text and then how to write when you are writing from an opinion or writing a research paper. We also have writing to learn, which is fantastic for metacognition, teaching students how to think about their reading and think about their writing. And then we have analyzing prompts, which is the number one strategy students need to learn leaving, um, leaving elementary school, leaving middle school and leaving high school. They need to analyze prompts because when they get into college, that's going to be the number one skill that students need. And it's going to be a skill that the professors and lecturers do not teach. Um, our students need to learn how to attack text-dependent prompts, and Literacy TA does a great job doing that. Integrating sources is an area where students learn and teachers learn about integrating sources that they use in a paper. So this is about writing about what other people have said, and we have templates and sentence starters, uh, great handouts and simple ideas that really work and can be implemented uh, the very same day that you pick them up online. And then we have academic summary. An academic summary takes you through a number of strategies that teachers can use to help students write more academically. And what I mean by academic summary is we're talking about, remember, beyond the ideas in the text, but how the text is constructed, how those ideas are put together. We want to teach students how to uh, investigate rhetorical devices. There's rhetorical devices used in every content area, and there's a text structure in every content area. There's a very specific text structure in science and uh, scientific journals and lab reports, and there's a very specific structure to uh, an analytical paper in history if they're doing maybe um, a primer, if they're writing about an, uh, analyzing primary or secondary documents if students are analyzing speeches, there's a very specific structure to that work. And under this section, Academic Summary, you will learn all sorts of, of ways to support students as they learn how to write academically. So these were the three 21st century skills in a very um, commonsensical, uh, familiar way for reading, speaking, and writing. But I also mentioned that there's character and we want to get to that right now. We're going to go ahead and zoom out and go over to character. And these are the character traits that we believe are critical for students in the 21st century. We need our students to be solution oriented, and I'm going to take you to the solution zone in just a second. Our students need to be solution oriented because there are so many problems in the world today, they need to be able to solve them on their own. They need to be resourceful, they need to take initiative, and they need to come up with solutions. They need to be able to predict what, a, what problems may come. Uh, see problems appear or happen before they are too big to solve so that they can start chipping away. For example, we ask our students very simple things like go home and type a half page paper. Well, a student might, the problem might be, my printer is broken. Well, instead of making that small problem into a huge problem, they need to solve that small problem immediately 
by going to an aunt's house or going to a library, going to maybe an after school program, but instead students will wait until the inevitable, they cannot print, they'll come back to class the next day and say, I, I wasn't able to print and now I have a real problem because now I don't have my assignment, I'm now losing points. We know this story, we've seen it and heard it a number of times, probably too many. Uh, so what we want our students to be is solution oriented and I'm gonna take you to the solution zone. The solution zone is, is something fun that I've created in my own classroom. And what I do is I quite literally hold up my hand and I say, guys, if you have a problem, I need you to have a solution. So what that means is when you come to me with a problem, you need to also have a solution ready. It sounds like, Mr. LeMaster, I have um, real, I, I wasn't able to print my essay last night, but um, because I knew that my printer was broken, I made arrangements at my grandfather's house and I was able to go to his house and print my essay, here is my essay. Instead of telling me your printer is broken, telling me you have no more ink, telling me you lost your book, you have a solution. I do wanna know what your problems are, but I also want your problems followed by a solution. And I call that the solution zone. And my students learn that very quickly. It's an expectation that I set in my classroom and my students follow it pretty, pretty well. So I am interested in hearing your problems, I tell them. And I'm very interested in how you solve them or how you intend to solve them. And that's really, really important. How are you going to solve this? And I call that the solution zone. Let's go ahead and go back to the character list. Students need to be adaptable. They need to be flexible. Um, they need to be flexible with their time. They need to be adaptable to different environments. They need to, as we, as we say, uh, kind of, um, I guess in, in simpler English, they need to go with the flow. They need to be able to um, change maybe an idea that they have. They need to be able to accept certain situations or circumstances that they didn't expect. Adaptability is really important. They also need to be adaptable with their skills. They need to be able to adapt to the newest skills and they need to be able to adapt to filling needs that um, are out there. There are new needs that are happening all the time and they need to be able to adjust and adapt to those needs. Resilient. As students are rejected getting into college, as students um, see their parents maybe losing their jobs, as students um, experience a failure at school, whether it be a sporting event or didn't make uh, ASB president, they need to be able to bounce back. They need to be able to bounce back and they need to be able to find the strength within themselves to push forward. And resiliency is key to a student's success. If they didn't get into university, they need to be able to be adaptable and go to a community college and be able to push through community college and get into the university after two years of work. Resiliency is critical. Um, if they find themselves laid off in the future, um, that'd be an unfortunate circumstance, but it is, it is probable. They need to be able to find a way out. They need to be able to pick themselves up and find a way to self-advocate and find a way to succeed once again, which is about industrious. Students need to be industrious. They need to have a strong work ethic. They need to be able to um, be innovative. Um, they need to be able to produce and also um, produce work that is valuable, produce work that other people see as valuable and um, be diligent in what they do industriousness or being industrious is, is very, very important to one's value. And that's one of the things that our students need is to be industrious. Collaborative, um, as so many projects now are done in groups, uh, teaching as you know, we're all being asked to be collaborative, which is a very important um, aspect of our work. Opening our doors and allowing people to observe us, talking about strategies and student performance, um, professional careers, uh, in the business world are no different. There are collaborative teams. Uh, there are groups that do uh, work together on certain projects and specific, specific tasks. All of this work is collaborative and students need to learn how to work well together. They need to learn how to be a teammate to someone. They need to learn how to deliver on deadlines and goals. And so it's really, really important that students learn how to work together. And then the last one is creative. 
Students need to learn how to be creative and, and maybe not just learn how to be creative, but, but to find their creativity, to be able to um, share ideas and um, innovate. They need to be able to creatively think through a problem. They need to be able to um, creatively think as, they de as they're um, demonstrating their resilience, create ways to get out of a situation that they're in. Um, they need to be able to create presentations that wow people. And that's what is really important is teaching our students that the creative mind is, is essential to 21st century. And we can do that through a number of ways. Uh, of course, we can have them write creatively. Uh, we can uh, inspire creativity through science and through observation and um, labs demonstrations in the in the physics classroom or in the chemistry classroom we can teach students how to be creative by doing innovative research projects in history we can teach students how to be creative by writing creatively in english um, all of those subjects we could also teach creativity through the production of online uh, presentations that include color and shapes and present ideas in new ways uh, we can teach students how to use modern uh, media software. So teaching them how to use online software and online presentation tools is really, really critical to 21st century skills. So Literacy TA, again, is, is equipped and ready to go for 21st century. And uh, we're really excited about uh, getting kids prepared for the next, the next step in their, in their careers and the next step in their, um, their professional and academic life. We are here to help. We're here to support. Um, please feel free to share this webinar with anyone who is interested in 21st century skills. We hope that we've clarified some things for you. Uh, we hope that we've inspired some ideas and uh, got those, those creative juices flowing so that you can get back in your classroom and uh, maybe start implementing some of these strategies. Maybe there's something we talked about that uh, needed to be discussed that you feel is very important that kids need to know. But remember, literacy does not change, but it evolves based on our time. And we need to teach our kids how to be literate. We need to teach our kids how to be effective communicators, but we need, we need strategies and support. And we also need to keep up on, with the times and we need to know how to use technology to um, help with this whole process. Uh, I'll leave you with this. Uh, I find that when I use technology in my classroom and I send technology home, so I have my kids respond on a discussion board versus write a half-page paper, the quality of work is better and the percentage of students who complete my work is always higher when I use technology. So t this is not about you need to learn how to use PowerPoint. T uh, 21st century skills is about how do I learn how to be a literate, productive citizen, but how do I also transition that competence into a 21st century world where uh, information is coming at us in all different directions, where people are presenting with lots of different uh, dynamic tools? How do I get engaged in that world? And um, how do I develop confidence and proficiency so that I can be productive myself and really offer um, the, the world something exciting and unique and, and become an integral part of um, this, this century and become an integral part of the next greatest idea. So I thank you very much for, this, for listening to this webinar. We uh, appreciate all the hard work that you do. Teaching is an honorable career, and we are so thankful for the work and the dedication that you bring to the job every day. So thank you very much. Go get them. Let's get those 21st century skills up and running in our classrooms. Thank you.